Hey guys, it's Summer Rain from Homestead, Brooklyn, and I'm outside of Rotterdam in the Netherlands to visit with Anthura, which is one of the foremost companies producing anthuriums and Phalaenopsis orchids. And it's really cool to see how they fit into this whole supply chain. So let's get a tour and see what they have in store. We sell boring, pretty boring stuff in actual fact. On this week's episode of Plant One On Me, Field Trip Edition. So just um, say your name and what position you are here at Anthera. Yes, my name is Matthijs Bodegom. It's a typical Dutch uh, name. I'm responsible for marketing and communication, which includes, in our case, product management as well. How did you get to Anthera? Well, I've, I've been involved in this company for, let's say, three and a half years by now. And uh, I have some experience in this industry for over a decade. Mm. And, um, you know, the, the, the reason why Antura attracted me is because it's such a focused and specialized organization. I saw a huge potential from a marketing perspective. So I thought, well, let's give it a try. And so what do you mean by focused? Well, you know, also uh, the, the, the company has really uh, a focus on a limited number of product groups. Um, clearly anthurium and orchids and both in cut flowers as well as pot plants and that's basically it uh, besides the fact that we extend our range on orchids from outdoors and special orchids etc but no, we are not a company involved in 300 different type of uh, crops anthurium and orchids that is and we want to strive to be the best on that, on that side. But what are some other elements that kind of when you start to focus on specific plant groups, what other benefits do you see? You know, you, you know we, we try to know basically everything from just a little, tiny little thing, which is either an anthurium or an orchid. But tiny in, in, in real life is, is obviously not, not the correct word because, you know, this, these worlds is, you know, it's large, it's huge. I mean, orchid, from value perspective, the number one product group plant-wise in Europe, for example. So, but you know, the advantage is that we know we want to be product kind of, you know, derived from product leadership. We want to know each and every characteristic of the plants, not only the way it shows off at consumers, also the way it behaves in throughout the supply chain. And clearly, our R and D um, uh, colleagues want to know up until DNA level, want to know everything. So. Yeah, and I think we're, it's interesting because we're standing here in the midst of your showroom where you have like fields of anthurium and also orchids in the back. And this is how, you know, me as a consumer, if I go to my garden center or my shop, I see plants such as these to purchase, but this is not exactly what you sell, no. correct? That's, that's correct. We are the very first stage of the supply chain. So we are in, our, in, in core business, we are an R&D company. So we develop new shapes, new, new sizes, new colors, but also characteristics like uh, cold tolerancy or heat tolerancy when you're talking about the Texas circumstances or whatsoever. So now we, uh, we sell boring, pretty boring stuff in actual fact. Small green young plants. And then that goes to a grower and the grower grows them out? Yeah, correct. Okay. We, uh, our customers are international and professional growers. And we sell nowadays over 70 countries worldwide on annual basis. So anthuriums and, and orchids are kind of acclaimed worldwide. You're saying 70 different countries. So these are, these are plants that have been in demand. And have they been in demand for a while or have you seen their demand rise and fall? Uh, well, they, uh, the anthurium compared with orchid um, uh, are in different, let's say, stages of their product life cycle. Uh, orchids, b despite the fact that it's by far the, the leading product group in, in Europe, as stated uh, previously, uh, is, is relatively young. I think it's, it's evolved tremendously over the last 15 years or something like that, while anthurium is there way longer. But the actual takeoff from Anthurium, from pro more production perspective, and as a, as a spin-off from the availability for consumers, started off in the early 70s, early 80s, something like that. Yeah. So what are some of the exciting kind of new cultivars or varieties that you're 
you know, starting to push out this year? Is it is it the different color bracts you're saying or different shapes? Are there anything that you're like pretty excited about? Just for example, a, a new product like this, it has a completely different shape, nearly non-enturium. We call it Lily and it's a, a pinkish one. It has a, it's, it's, you know, it's a kind of more fancy type of, of flower. So it's a combination of a new shape and a new color. And it also has the, the, the characteristics plant-wise, supply chain-wise wise that we're looking for. And this one looks like it has a double bract and some of the other ones have singles. Is this like a... Yeah, a little bit. A mutation from a mutation, nature. <laughs> so, I, I mean, and, and you mentioned a mutation, but is this how these different varieties happen? Is it largely from a mutation, or is it something that you're kind of toying with, uh, you know, in the R&D stage? The, the, the second. Okay. Uh, we, we in uh, our R&D our uh, colleagues, they, it's, they continuously work on improving, you know, uh, the, our product range. And what they, for example, do, they make a, a, a hundreds of thousands of crossings uh, f throughout the year. And then it's a kind of trial and error process in actual fact. So it's, uh, they con continuously decide which products will, are not suitable or do not meet our the high standards before it got actually introduced into the market. And that's the, that's the kind of game we play. Mm -hmm. we, we, you know, we want to create new products which met, met our, for example, more cold tolerance, uh, more durable, you know, production wise, need less water, less nutrition, all these kind of things, and clearly uh, matching the consumer demands in mm -hmm. these 17 countries. So, now, challenging. And it, yeah, that is challenging, and especially that you're, you're, you're almost saying like we want it to be as foolproof as possible, but as pretty as possible. So the consumer doesn't have to take as much, <laughs> doesn't have to like remember to water or anything. That's kind of what I'm hearing because mm -hmm. it'll be like much more drought resistant and whatever. But um, I'm curious now. You're, you're, you know, obviously you have like fields of this anthurium, and you're creating these small little boring plants, as you said. Are you doing this through tissue culture? Are you doing it vegetatively? How are you propagating all of these? We propagate in labs, so tissue culture, okay. absolutely. So. Okay. Uh, uh, we have a lot of colleagues. Uh, we have a, a number of production locations throughout the world. In our case, not only here in the Netherlands, but also in Germany, Macedonia, and China. Mm. And, at, uh, and at, uh, in China and Macedonia, a lot of our colleagues um, uh, prop uh, are involved in the propagation process, okay. all in labs. So for those of us who aren't familiar with tissue culture TC labs, I'm assuming that you're kind of working with some of the, the meristematic, you know, cell, cellular level aspects and you have to kind of like, it goes through a process through the laboratory. Can you just take me through that process and how many weeks that it might take and, and just give me an example with an anthurium, for instance? Yeah, sure. Um, maybe to start off, if you take a look at the entire process of, of, of uh, uh, the actual breeding, propagation and coming to a certain uh, required minimum amount of, of plants, it takes us up to seven up, seven up to nine years to develop a complete new develop, uh, variety, let's say from scratch. And, uh, and in, within that process, clearly a large portion is the actual R&D, which takes, let's say, the first five years or something like that. The moment uh, that, we, that we think that from technical perspective, the, the a new, a potential new variety, I have to say, uh, is good enough, we start testing and we also involve our customers. So this is why we are standing here in this show greenhouse, because our, our, our growers, our customers, they will, uh, they will inform us whether they think it's an attractive new color, whether it matches their way of growing, all these kind of things. And only when we pass these stages, the, the actual propagation starts. And that takes place in labs, labs for us in, in generally uh, uh, production labs. Mm -hmm. And it goes through a kind of uh, certain sequences. So my colleagues, they kind of yeah, cut a small, let's say cutting into small pieces. They put it on a growth medium. Then it's got it been sent sent to a kind of let's say a, a controlled uh, a climatological environment, stays there for let's say 10, 12 weeks or something like that, and then we um, um, how do you say repeat this? Sorry, <laughs> repeat these kind of stages. So slightly depending on at which stage a variety is when, for example, you have specific interest in a new one, up until the moment that we let's say. Uh, ship uh, half a million or a million of these plants, it takes at least 40 weeks up to a year for us in total. Wow, yeah. wow. I mean, that is something to be said for. I mean, in s seeing a different cultivar on the market, 
that, you know, all, all of these guys made it, you know, all these yeah. guys made the cut, so made, to speak. Made it to the finishing yeah, line. Yeah, exactly, which is like, a, <laughs> which is an Olympic marathon unto itself. Um, so, you know, you're, you're mentioning that, you know, a lot of the R&D comes here. So you're, you're kind of working in partnership with growers because you're, you're generating, it sounds like, the, um, the things that you think will work for the market. Mm -hmm. But then you showcase it to the growers and the growers like, eh, that didn't sell or this won't work for me. So it's, it sounds like a little back and forth. It does, do the growers ever come in and say, I want this, and then you try to develop it or... Well, it's, it work? it's a kind of mixture. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a grower walks in and says, wow, this is my new future pearl, you know? And, uh, and then he or she wants it exclusively, clearly, because he can distinguish himself. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but in general, we show it in, in, a, in the show greenhouse like this. We have, by the way, a similar one in China, and where we do the same, uh, where we play the same uh, game. Uh, people walk in and, they, and our growers, Dutch growers come in, let's say, every month. And every month they, they fill in certain forms and answer uh, you know, certain questions about the way they in general look at the new uh, plants and whether, it, whether it's attractive enough to replace an, an existing one. And only after a certain number of, let's say, uh, analysis or tests or whatever you want to call it, where well, we conclude and then we say, okay, this has enough potential, not only from technical perspective, but also from market perspective. And then we actually start, do the inter start off the introduction. But, you know, you were just asking me how long it takes from our side. The moment our growers get in, in our young plants, mm -hmm. it will take them also another 40 weeks up until, let's say, a year. Mm -hmm. So th that means that when somebody picks a new variety here, it will take roughly a half up to two years wow. before it's actually available for the consumer market. It's really impressive. I mean, these are things that I, I really do want to get, like, you know, customers and people who are houseplant aficionados to really understand and appreciate once they actually see that plant in the marketplace, how long it actually took mm -hmm. in order to be able to get that variety to them. Changing the questions, um, do you have any special varieties that you, you favor here? My personal favorite, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it's, it's also a bit color-wise. I like, for example, this is a small plant. It's also, it's, it's also growing in, in larger pot yeah. sizes. But this one is called Sisu. Sisu. Sisu, yeah. It's beautiful. And it's, you know, I really like, like the, the actual also. purple yeah. lilac type of color, but also because it's, we call it ton sur ton. You know, the French uh, word of that, the, 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 the spadix yeah. has the same color, color yeah. as the actual flower. And that's what, yeah, from personal, that's what, sorry, what's what I prefer. Yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. It really is stunning. And it has like a really thin kind of bract as yeah, well. Yeah, correct. I like some of your darker varieties, the really dark, almost like blackish red colors. Yeah. I've been seeing that coming into the, at least the American marketplace. Correct. Yeah, yeah correct. It's, it's there. Also, yeah, from, you know, like everybody has his own preferences. Mm -hmm. For me, it feels a bit like an autumn type of product, mm -hmm. but it's lovely during winter time, yeah. like it's now cold up here. I mean, this is a great spring Easter kind of thing. You Absolutely. could like package it. Yeah, Absolutely. fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Like, let's we'll probably get a little tour of the place, and Absolutely. I think that would be uh, that would be perfect. Hey guys, so hopefully you found that very interesting, and you got to see how plants actually get to you in the garden centers. It takes sometimes months to years in order to be able to develop and get to you as a consumer. So if you like these episodes, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And of course, you could follow along on my journey at my website at homesteadbrooklyn.com and on my Instagram at homesteadbrooklyn. Ciao.